Good morning, everyone. Today, we are meeting together to learn about the healer. The Lord Jesus is the healer, and we want to be able to receive healing for each one of ourselves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we look to you by your Spirit. You will uh, speak to us. We open our hearts to you that you will uh, pour into our hearts new understanding uh, so that, Lord, by your truth, we'll be able to be set free from just being, uh, being mediocre or being ordinary. So we want to be led by you, Holy Spirit, and we welcome you to be our guide and our teacher and our master. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to uh, do several, uh, two more um, topics, uh, points. Last week, we have already covered the first three, and uh, I'll do a quick summary. But going back to three weeks ago, we talk about the spiritual roots of uh, diseases. And it's for you to review that. We will not review that lesson, but it's very important to know that majority of diseases have spiritual roots. That means to say there are strongholds in our lives that control us bind us and cause diseases to spread and cause it to uh, get worse and worse. And uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or even diabetes or diseases that doctors classified as syndromes, all of these have spiritual roots. And therefore, just medication may not solve the problem. We have to look into the realm of the spirit. And uh, the Bible gives us insights as to what this is all about. Just to do a quick review from last week, we talked about the first three points. First, acknowledge there are things that we need to know and acknowledge. Truth needs to be acknowledged because without certain knowledge, we cannot have victory. We will not be able to have victory over our, uh, for our healing. Uh, what are some of the key knowledge you need to know? Well, first of all, that God has power, power to heal, and that God in Christ Jesus is a healer. In fact, his name is called Jehovah Rapha, the Jehovah, the Lord heals. That's what the Word of God de declares. And we know, secondly, that God is willing. In fact, the Word that we uh, talked about last week was that when a leper came to Jesus and asked, Lord, I know that you can heal my disease, but will you, if you are willing, Lord? And what was the answer by Jesus? I am willing. I am willing. I am is the name of God. And willing is Jesus' answer. In fact, throughout the Bible, there's never been a time when those who seek the Lord for healing that God didn't heal. Or people like uh, the time of Jesus, that everyone who came to Jesus, Jesus never once said, I'm not going to heal you. In fact, there's a new verse, there's a verse in, in the letter of the epistle, the third epistle of John, in which John wrote these words. On behalf of God, I pray that you will prosper in your health. Now, the word pray that uh, is translated in the King, in New King James is actually the word I wish. The original Greek is I wish your, you to prosper, especially in your health and in your soul. So, Prospering in our soul and in our health is something God wished for us. Wish here simply means yearns, desire, uh, and this is the heart of God. God does not wish for us to be sick. Some people say God will punish you with sickness. Well, that's not the way God does. It's always sickness comes from the devil. Jesus is a healer. So if you know this, then this Based on God's promises, we'll be able to come and receive healing. 
That's the second, second thing we talked about last week, is that this power for healing has been dedicated to us. Now, I'd like to, 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 for us to read together uh, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. That's the verse for today. 10, 19. 10, 19. This is a scripture that Jesus, Jesus spoke when the 70 uh, believers were sent out uh, to preach and to heal the sick. And they have come back reporting success that people are being healed, that demons are being cast out, and they were uh, able to succeed. And so when they came back, they were so happy when they reported back. And this is what Jesus declared. It is for all believers. So verse 19 is what Jesus said. I'd like you to turn to it. <clears throat> Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, this is delegation, the power given to us. But I'd like you to analyze three key elements here. Uh, in fact, in this verse, it begins with the word behold. Now, behold here is in English language, we call in the imperative mode. This is something that Jesus commands all believers to do. All right? So, this word behold doesn't mean uh, if you like to. No, it's a command. The behold here means see with understanding. See with perception of what is going, really going on. That's this particular word see or behold. Now, this is the first thing. It's something Jesus has commanded. Second, he says, I've given you. So some people say, I'm waiting for God to give me the power to heal the sick. I'm waiting for God to heal me. Why, what are you waiting for? It's already 2,000 years. It's every time the Bible talks about healing power, it's always in the past tense. It already has been given. In fact, in 1 Peter 2.24, Peter writes, that by his stripes we are healed. And it says that these stripes were the base on the Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. It has already been done. So it's always by his stripes we are healed. When did the stripes, when did Jesus sustain those stripes and the punishment and, uh, for 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 our uh, healing, this was done 2,000 years ago, all right? This is what we said, part of God's redemption plan to redeem us, to buy us back. And that includes health and freedom from diseases and healing. Now, that's the first thing. Behold, and then it says, I have not only given you, but given you what? What has God, give, Jesus, given us? It says authority. Authority means uh, His authority. Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth is now in my hands. Now I give it to you. I've given it to you. you are, as long as you are a believer, you follow, you come by faith, you, I give it to you. But what is this power for? It says, To trample on serpents and scorpions. Now, serpents and scorpions are just biblical metaphors to describe spiritual forces of darkness, spirits, evil spirits, demons. These are the different venomous uh, creatures in the realm of the spirit. They are cruel. Their enemy is called Satan himself. So his assistants are sometimes called serpents and scorpions because they are very venomous creatures. They are there to poison. Now, it says to trample. What is the meaning of to trample? What is this authority for? To trample on spirit forces of darkness. Trample simply means to put them under our feet. That means the authority is given to you to step on your enemies, spiritual enemies, demonic enemies. To step on something is to have victory over 
to have control over, to win over. That means when something is under your feet, the biblical metaphor is that you are in the upper hand. That's what it means. That's the amount of authority you have. And then how much power is this? Well, it not only gives you power to trample over the enemy, but it also gives you power over all the power. Can you notice this verse? All the power of the devil. All. That means the power of Jesus, the authority that we have, is over all the power whatsoever the enemy can come against us. So this delegation is given to us so we need to exercise it. And when Peter and John exercised it, Jesus, uh, when Peter and John was uh, in the book of Acts, on the way to the place for prayer, he met this beggar that's on the doorway, gateway, and he, uh, the, 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 what happened? Well, the, the beggar was expecting something from them. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give to you. What did he have? Power, authority. So this is what Jesus has declared, that he has given to us. Therefore, we need to take hold of it, hold fast to it, make use of it. That's why many Christians fail to make use of it, they don't know this particular promise. And in the basis of this promise, we can actually have faith. Then the third thing is that we learned last week, we uh, do receive healing. Uh, well, by, we declare healing by activating our voice command. We need to speak it. Speak to the demon, command the demon, or command the sickness to, to depart, just as Jesus did when he spoke uh, to this fever, high fever that was in Peter's mother-in-law. Uh, and she was having such a high fever. They were desperate. They came to Jesus and asked for him to help. And he, what did he do? He just rebuked the fever. He rebuked the fever and it was gone. So... We need to speak it by faith. So these are three things we covered last week. Today we want to talk about received. Healing is received by faith. Now, I'd like to introduce you to three, uh, four things in how to receive. I would call it, first of all, you need to hear. Faith comes by hearing. You need to hear. So hear... First of all, you have to hear God's promise, God's word, all right? So some people say, <clears throat> uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes I, I find it, oh, this is too wonderful. It's, it's, I've never experienced it before. So uh, I, I, I sometimes wonder whether this is really the case. But we need to hear the voice of God. What is the voice of God? It is in the Word. Whatever God promised. Sometimes we say, well, I don't feel it. No, we have to hear, we have to listen, not to what we feel, but to what God has spoken. And this is uh, where faith comes in. And uh, so faith requires us to hear. And then we need to secondly act. Uh, no, sorry, uh, what is this? Uh, the second one here would be, let me see, expect, sorry. Okay, expect. What do you expect? Look, even the, the beggar at the gate called Beautiful, this cripple who has been crippled all his life, when Peter and John came to him, the Bible says what? He expected something. Expectation based on God's promise is a very important part of exercising faith. We expect it. Someone said you, you must not park your faith besides 
past failures. You must not depend on past failures. Oh, in the past, I, somebody prayed for me, but it never happened. Yeah, that's a past failure. Don't park your faith in the past uh, failure. Or even your past success, park it in the precious promises of God. But based on this, expect it to happen. That means if God says so, I'm going to expect it. And uh, I, I believe it. And uh, so faith has to do with an expectation. Then there is A. In A, what do we uh, do? We have to act on it. We have to act on this as if God has already done it. We have to exercise faith by acting on it. Someone said, action is faith. If you didn't act on it, it is not faith at all. So if you have been prayed for, you act on it as if you have received healing. Although it is not happened in the physical realm, but we say, if you accept it in your spirit, your spirit man has already been activated, it will sooner or later appear in the visible realm, in the body. Then, thirdly, fourthly, we have got resist. Now, this is a very important word, resist. What is to do? Res resist the devil. Now, this is a problem with many of us. We often listen to voices that does not come from the Lord. You see, one of the most common things that you often, people often hear is words like, after being prayed for, what do people say? I often hear people saying, oh, it, it didn't work. I was prayed for, but it didn't work. It doesn't work. Only the Spirit of God will work when we resist the devil. The devil tells us, see, uh, you have been prayed for, but there's no visible sign. Yet, what are we supposed to do? Act according to faith in God's promise. But there's a common phrase that some people often, who didn't get healed, uh, often say, actually they are echoing the voice of the devil, when someone doesn't see physical, physically the healing yet, they say, I thought God healed me, but it didn't happen. The pain has come back. Many people don't understand that pain will come back as a test or it will come back sometimes momentarily, but if we refuse to resist the temptation from the devil which says, you see, it didn't happen. God didn't heal you. Uh, God didn't keep his word. God never fails. God never fails to keep his word. And so, how do you resist the devil? Well, just tell him, devil, enemy, get lost. Depart from me. Jesus said in in fact, Luke 14, 19, he says that it's this power for healing is over all the power of the enemy. So the enemy is always at work. Sometimes they speak to us and we don't even realize that they are fooling us. And the word of God says, you need to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee as in terror, flee from you. So, if we don't resist voices from the enemy, then we soon succumb to it. So, faith requires you to do the, these four things. And if you were to begin uh, voicing your agreement with God, what does God say? God says that He's willing. God says there's enough power for healing. I go according to what God has written. I don't even go according to my past success. I go by God's written word. He has promised it. I go by faith. And as long as you do that, you will begin to see 
uh, things happening in our life. Now, healing must be received by faith. And this is non-negotiable. And if you will just exercise faith, believing God's promise, you will see it happening. Okay. Now, there's a fourth principle here you need to understand. This is quite important. Healing must come, must be received. Now, few things here you need to know about this principle. First of all, a person who wants to be healed must want it. At least in his heart, he must desire it. One of the things that the Holy Spirit respects is our rights of choice. He will never force healing on anybody who don't want it. There are those who, you'd be surprised that there are some people who don't want it. Fear, maybe. Fear of conflict of different spirits. That's because they are not willing to uh, put their faith in Jesus. God's basic unnegotiable requirement is that we trust by faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is believing what God said. Hebrews 11.2 says, that defines faith is a substance hoped for. It's something you look forward to. It doesn't happen. And the evidence is not seen. Evidence not yet seen. Now, a lot of people confuse this idea of faith. Let me explain it. There was a lady who came to, uh, in fact, a uh, minister who came to this pastor, Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, one day. And she has been prayed for three times by Hagen. Hagen is one of the most anointed uh, in bringing healing. Now, three times she paid for her. And uh, so he kept asking God, what, what's going on here? But he said, I heard nothing. God wasn't telling me anything. And later on, Hagin got a word from the Lord. Ask her, do you believe Will you believe in God's healing for your life, for your sickness? She said, yes, I will believe. He can ask her, when will you believe? She said, I will believe when I'm healed. Take note of this. Follow, try and follow my argument here. So Hagin said, you say you will believe when God has healed you. Uh, that's what most people say. I will believe, yes, but when I'm healed. But that is not believing because you don't need any more faith once you are healed. Once you are healed, you, you know for a fact there's no need for faith because it's already healed. Uh, it, it's already happened. So, now... When something has already happened, you don't need any faith. You don't have to activate faith. Faith is something you hope for, hasn't happened. And you visualize the invisible as something that is visible. You visualize it by faith on the, pres on the, on the promises of God. What did God promise? I am willing. Is it God's will? Yes. God never brings disease into our lives. It's Satan. But do you believe before it happens? That's faith. When you don't know yet, but you trust in His Word. Now, when we honor God by trusting in His Word, He will act. This is why many people are not able to see healing because he is waiting for healing to take place before he exercises faith. But God already said in Hebrews 11.6 that 
without faith, without exercising faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. But God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, those who exercise reward, uh, who exercise faith. Sometimes our faith may be very little. Just like this man who came to Jesus asking for healing of um, his sick daughter, in fact, who has died. And Jesus asked him, do you believe? And he says, yes, Lord, but help me in my unbelief because my faith is so small, he says. So the issue is not whether how big or how small is your faith. It is whether you're going to rest your decision and your future on God's promises. God always gives His word. It is on the basis of His promise that faith is built. So when you begin to exercise faith, you haven't seen it yet, so that is called faith. Once you have seen it, it is not faith. But of course, when you hear other testimonies, or you hear the, see the testimonies in the Word of God uh, when people are being healed uh, supernaturally, and you begin to get used to the idea that the supernatural power of, the, of God is available because the Lord is a healer. And because He heals in the past, we have to trust Him. Now, by trusting Him, we acknowledge that He has the power before we see it. Faith is something that pleases God. So, again, let's get back to chapter 5 in this example of the paralyzed man. In chapter 5, we, we read here that Jesus... Uh, let me just read to you verse 18, chapter 5, Luke's Gospel. Then behold, men, a group of men brought on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before Jesus. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the rooftop and let him down through his bed, with his bed, through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. Now, they laid this man before Jesus. Verse 20, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Now, important word here is, Jesus saw their faith. Faith is very important. Faith must come either from, in this case, the friends of this paralyzed man. These few men who brought him took the trouble by their action of bringing the paralyzed man demonstrated they had faith in Jesus. Here, we are not told whether the paralyzed man has any faith. So, other people's faith can help when they are, your own faith is weak. But for those who are sick, he would be best to also exercise faith. But definitely, he must want. If he doesn't want to be healed, then he will not exercise faith. So, he must desire it. Just like those of us who, after hearing this today's sermon, are like you, if you are a Christian, to begin praying for the sick. And as you begin to start praying, your faith will grow. Yes. Case example is a man called John Wimber. The first six months, he, he, he took God God has his word. And so he started praying for the sick. The first six months, he didn't see any healing. In fact, people who were sick became sicker. But John Wimber 
continue to trust God's word. He says, Lord, your word says so. I see it everywhere. And uh, so I believe if it happened in the scriptures, this is a model for me. I will continue to trust your word instead of trusting my experience. I have no experience, but I'm going to trust in your word. He did not give up. He kept on uh, praying for the sick and for people. In fact, he was the one who gave a word to Nikki Gumbel, the one who started the evangelistic tour um, uh, that we all hear about. So John Wimble put his faith in the word of God. That pleases God. So, don't depend on your feelings. Don't depend on the visible signs. Just trust what God says. And uh, faith is so significant. Remember, there was a centurion, a company commander of the uh, Roman army in Capernaum. He sent someone to Jesus, asking Jesus to come, uh, well, to heal his, his, his servant, whom he highly valued. But before Jesus arrived, he sent messengers to say, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. But you speak the word. You see, you speak the word. You activate by your voice. The moment you speak the word, my servant will be healed. That's faith. He believed in the word of Jesus. So if you and I believe in God's word, sooner or later, you begin to see healing taking place because you are building up faith. And that's how all of us operate in this realm. Now, one of the problems among Christians, why they are not willing to exercise faith for healing, is a wrong understanding of, uh, of uh, doing God's will. I like the example given by Bill Johnson, a very anointed man of God. He said that in every big company that manufactures new equipment, take for instance the Apple computer, electronics manufacturers, they always have two separate kinds of departments. One is called a manufacturing department where everything that's manufactured must work perfectly. They cannot affect, afford to have mistakes because once the product goes out, you, the company don't want to have any recall and then having to repair. First time the product is made, it must be in perfect working condition. That's manufacturing. But there is another department in all these high-tech companies called research department. In the research department, they would be trying out new things and obviously, they will find many ways of doing it which will not work. So they have to take risks. They'll make mistakes. So these two have got different objectives. The manufacturing department cannot afford to have mistakes. The research department cannot afford not to make mistakes because they are finding new ways, new products, new systems. So likewise, when we exercise faith in the Word of God, we sometimes may not fully understand the situation and we may make mistakes, but that's fine. We have, that's part of risk-taking. That's faith. So it can be the recipient having faith. It can be uh, the uh, the person praying, imparting healing, 
best, both of them, uh, to have faith. Now, how does faith operate for a person who is receiving healing? It must be this way. I remember this pastor for the first time. He was being prayed for to receive healing. He had on his face, half his face was paralyzed. He felt numb. He has got no feeling at all. The other half of his face was active, so he could feel things. He could move his lips. So it's a bit odd, you can say, that when he smiles, one half will smile, the other half will frown. Uh, one side, his eyes would be moving, but the other side is always stay open, day and night. So, he said, I believe in the law of contact transmission. So, he went to this charismatic pastor at this meeting. At the close of the meeting, he went forward. He asked the pastor, could you pray for me? And the pastor was closing the meeting, just laid hands, prayed for him, declared healing for him in the name of Jesus. And the moment he was prayed for, he says, I receive it and thank you, God, for your healing power. Then he went home with his friends uh, in tow. And one of the friends who didn't understand about how to receive healing said, so are you, are you healed? He said, yes. But the friend looked at him and his face and says, oh, but I still see one half of your face is working, the other half is still no change. He said, yes, there is a difference. In my spirit, I receive the healing. Now, it's the spirit that determines what happens in the body. So I declare in the spirit, in align with God's law and God's working and God's will, I receive it by faith. So yes, my, in my spirit, I, I know I'm healed. But the friend said, it's a bit odd. You say you know, but we don't see it. He said, correct. It is not visible yet, but in my spirit, I receive it. So there's a principle here. Sometimes it takes time. So he went home. This uh, Christian went home. He slept through the night. He just gave thanks. Now, thanksgiving is a very, very important step of faith. Just like this leper, he gave thanks. Ten lepers were healed one day and only one came back. This chapter 5, this one single leper that has been healed, what must he do? He must go and make an offering, a thank offering. So when you are always thankful, it's an act of faith. So this person continued to thank God for it slept through the night. The next morning, he woke up. He discovered that he was healed. So, the physical healing may be lagging behind the spirit realm. Healing comes from the spirit. Now, it's very important for you to understand this, that it is the spirit that activates faith. This is where faith is being birthed. This is your soul. Your soul would be emotional, heartbreak, can be healed because of the faith generated by the spirit. Then when it begins to operate, it operate, it works on your body. Now we talk about this tripartite man last week. So faith will begin to operate this way, not the other way. So this is how you exercise faith. Many Christians cannot see healing because he expects the reverse. 
Now, your body cannot exercise faith unless your spirit says so. So it's a spiritual realm that determines, and that's where the faith is birthed. And this faith is birthed based on what? Based on the word. Okay. Now, always birth, faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. That's why Jesus said, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Why? Because the word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and is able to discern difference between soul and spirit, and is effective, is powerful for healing. So we base on God's word, that's where the healing takes place. Lastly, uh, by the way, there's one more thing I need you to know about uh, this faith. Now, you need to know that when there's faith, there is one important ingredient that comes into your life. It manifested by obedience. Obedience. Obedience, you obey God's instruction. Now, let, let me highlight this point. This is a very important principle. In the ancient times, when Jesus recalled in this passage, in chapter 4, let me just read to you what Jesus said. <clears throat> Jesus said, in, after reading his, his uh, mission about healing the brokenhearted, proclaiming liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, then he says this, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Then he goes on to say, but he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever you have heard done in Capernaum, where the Lord of miracles, do also here in your country. You will instruct me, Jesus said. Now Jesus in Nazareth, he will say, he's saying, you people in Nazareth will tell me to do the same miracles I did in Capernaum. But assuredly, I say to you, Jesus said, no prophet is accepted in his own country. See, when there's no respect for God and the, the prophet, the healing cannot take place. There's oh, disobedience in attitude. Verse 25, but I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three and a half years and there was great famine throughout all the land but to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. So Elijah went to a foreign country not to Israel to bring uh, to bring a, a resource to 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 because her food didn't run out he did a miracle there verse 27 and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian now take note Naaman was a Syrian general. He was the only one being healed. There are many, many in Israel, not a single one of them was healed. Why? Because they did not honor the healer. Jesus is a healer, but they have no respect for the prophet bringing the healing. So there's an attitude problem. So no miracle happened. Even in Nazareth, no miracle happened. Jesus could not do any miracle because there's no honor for the prophet. But the second thing here is this. Nam, Na Naaman, when he came to prophet Elisha, what did Elisha tell him to do? Three things. 
He said, firstly, you go yourself to a specific place called a river in Israel. Now, this Naaman didn't like the rivers of Israel because they are so much dirtier, smaller. He's got much nicer rivers back home in Syria. But he initially didn't want to go until one of his servants told him, General Sir, you are willing to do anything. Why can't you just take this instruction and obey? And then, second, Naaman must go to the river and dip himself a specific number of times, seven times. So if he gone there and he dipped himself six times, do you think he'll be healed? Of course not. So you may think, well, what's the difference between six times and seven times? It makes the difference of whether you're going to get healed or not healed. So it's very important that when God gives an instruction, we obey. So this man, um, in fact, remember another time when Jesus spoke to, ten lepers came to Jesus. And what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't heal a single of them, one of them instantaneously. He told his ten lepers, go make your way to the priests. Go to the temple, make an offering. Show yourself to the priests. You must go. That's all Jesus told them. And as they went, Along the way, they all got healed. Now, let me ask you, if they went halfway, will they get healed? Or they refuse to go when they will say, look, we ask you to heal us and now you tell us to go somewhere else. It's so troublesome. That's why it's important to know the, that obedience is necessary as an act of faith. All right. Then lastly, kept. I just want to say that we keep the anointing of healing by what? Sanctification. That means we live a life uh, in agreement with God. We walk also in obedience like just now, but I live a life that is set apart, meaning to say, in every man's heart, there is a throne. And Jesus needs to be enthroned to keep it. A person may not need to be a believer in Jesus. Uh, he need not be a Christian in order to receive healing. But the moment he has received healing, he should, as early as possible, link up with relationship with Jesus and enthrone Jesus in your life as king. Why must you enthrone Jesus? Now, we know the teaching of Jesus regarding the spiritual realm. And let me explain this in a picture. Jesus was explaining how spiritual forces impact our our lives. And Jesus said that in our heart, every one of us, uh, I'm not talking about the muscle in your, in your, in your chest. I'm talking about the heart, the, 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 the soul uh, of, of your life. So there is a, what do we call? A throne. The question is, see who sits on this throne? in your heart. And Jesus said that sometimes people who uh, may not realize it, but demonic spirits like to occupy this throne. Okay. Demon demonic spirits like to occupy the throne of our hearts. When that happens, what happens? Jesus said that's how a person get uh, Oppressed, or sometimes he's uh, being demonized. That means when 
Demonic spirits take charge. They control our lives. So Jesus said this, that you cannot keep this throne empty. So we cannot cast out a demon and leave the person empty-hearted. Jesus must occupy the throne of our hearts. So when we, uh, he must sit on the throne. Otherwise, if you're left vacant, it will be uh, occupied again by the same evil spirit, and he'll bring in seven others worse than himself. And then the end will be worse than at the beginning. So Jesus teaches about the throne in our hearts. So we, when we exalt Jesus, when we enthrone him in our hearts, we will be very safe. We'll be able to retain the anointing for our healing. Now, some years back, I was, uh, I had to, I had once to, we went with another elder to pray for someone who was demonized. This man, uh, at exactly 8 p.m., he would, uh, he would, it seems like out of control, he would begin to consume a lot of liquor, and then he would start yelling in top of voice, and he becomes, uh, and he said that he could feel the chilly entrance of uh, demonic spirits coming into his, his body and then taking over control. Even though he rejected him, he had no power. So when we visited him, I said, look, we are going to cast this devil out, but tell me, do you want Jesus into your life? Uh, will you welcome Jesus into your heart? He said, no, I don't want anyone to be in charge. I want to be number one. So what could we do? We did not cast out that demon because if we had done so, another seven other demons may come in. Also another time when we talk sanctification, we mean living in obedience to God's word. There was one case where I remember casting out all the demons. It took us five days. But this person, after she was healed, she one day walked past a temple and she saw a lot of uh, activity. There was a medium dancing up and down. And she went near and watched and stood there. And because she had not enthroned Jesus in her heart. The anointing, uh, well, the, she could not keep her healing. He was demonized a second time, and we had to clean her up the second time. So allegiance to Jesus, exalting Jesus as a worshiper of Jesus, this is what we call a sanctified life that will help to keep the anointing. One of the things that we need to learn about is <clears throat> Jesus is the healer. But um, we must not allow other things to block His power operating in our lives. Last week, I've touched on some of these blockages. Uh, we, if we allow blockages to our blessing to uh, come into our lives, we will see a relapse. For instance, we say last week, unforgiveness is a big open door for demonic forces to operate in our lives. Fear, fear of men, fear of death, fear of demons, all this fear can control us and bring back the uh, disease. Sometimes it's hatred. Now, these are big three. Hatred, when you hate other people, or you hate yourself. A lot of people who hate themselves because they're disappointed with themselves. They look at themselves through their own perspective instead of God's perspective. What happens? Then it, do, it does damage to the... It causes the autoimmune system to malfunction. So you have got white corpuscles. We're supposed to attack... Uh, germs and uh, viruses coming from outside. Instead of that, it begins to attack body tissue, 
For instance, some of these uh, autoimmune system uh, uh, will start attacking, connecting issue of our joints. So doctors call that rheumatoid arthritis. So these are, there are many such diseases where we allow uh, our lives to be uh, controlled by these uh, forces that are enemies to our lives. So beware of the blockages. We talked about it last week. Learn to walk with God. Walk in obedience. And... Uh, Remove every hindrance. Have a life of devotion. Be a true worshipper of Jesus. Enthrone him and you'll find that he will protect you. <clears throat> For your application, this is what we must do. I'd like you to do this. For our application, we are told in Luke 10, 19 to see that means to be able to grasp the spiritual significance, to grasp what is going on, to see with understanding that Jesus has given authority to tremble on the spirits of infirmity. Now, <clears throat> we are going to make a declaration to see in a minute. Then we have to declare I want us to declare together that we have received his authority over all the power of the, of the enemy because he has already given. So we must declare we have received it. And then we need to strengthen my faith. Why do I say strengthen my faith? Because it's like this. Some people say, I don't have faith. This is wrong. According to Romans 12, God has already given everyone according to the measure of faith. Faith has been embedded into your spirit when God created us. He's already given a measure of faith. You need to make use of that. So don't ever say, I don't have enough faith. Okay, maybe you don't have enough faith to do extraordinary miracles. But you have enough faith to receive ordinary miracles. And particularly if you are a believer in Jesus, you have enough faith to see signs and wonders. All right. So we are going to pray in a minute. And I'd like you to declare with me. And then during this week, uh, I'd like you to do a few things. One is to share these five principles with uh, someone. I'd like you to, number two, during this week, to pray for two people who are sick. Exercise it by faith. And uh, if you yourself have been unwell, now this week I'd like you to lay hands on yourself, use some anointing oil, and declare Luke uh, 10, 19 for yourself, and you take authority for your own healing. So this will be the assignment for this week. Share these five principles with somebody Second, pray for two people for, who are sick and then uh, declare uh, Luke 10, 19 to be yours. All right, but right now, I'd like you to uh, do this with me. If you can bow your heads, we are going to make a declaration together wherever you are. <clears throat> Just follow me. In Jesus' name, I declare what Jesus has promised. That I now see that he has given me authority. Authority to trample on the spirits of darkness and diseases. I declare that I have received your authority, Lord Jesus. I received authority which is over all the power of the enemy. 
I will strengthen my faith in your promises stated in your word. I will expect you, Holy Spirit, to heal me according to your word. Help me this week to pray for someone who is unwell. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for wishing, for yearning that I prosper and be in good health. I receive this precious promise, the promise that, Lord Jesus, you have already given me this authority over the enemy. I receive it with joy, by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those of you who are having any unwellness, I'd like you to just, if you are the father, just place your hand on whichever child. If your child is sometimes well and sometimes unwell, you just lay your hand on on the person uh, in your household and I'm going to pray healing right now. Ready? Now, according to the promises of God in the written word and in Jesus' name, I rebuke every form of infirmity that is in these bodies and I Rebuke the spirit of fever, the spirit of uh, darkness, uh, uh, discouragement, of fear, of insomnia, of, uh, of failure. Uh, in Jesus' name, I, I break every spiritual uh, root that has been embedded in this body. And I declare that the power of God to heal is upon you. Receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Amen.